Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. Recyclico's patented recycling process achieves up to 100% recovery of battery metals from lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. Recyclico Battery Materials Incorporated trades on the TSX Venture AMY on the OTCQB AMY ZF and Frankfurt ID4. For more information, visit Recyclico.com or phone us at 778-574-4444. Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. You're listening to GoldRadio.fm. Available online at HowStreet.com, TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to GoldRadio.fm, podcasting in point nine 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 five. I'm Jim Goddard. My guest is Martin Armstrong, founder of Armstrong Economics, available online at armstrongeconomics.com. He's speaking to us from Florida. Some of the things we'll be looking at in today's interview, could we see World War III before the U.S. election? Is the United Nations running Canada? And will the Dow hit 65,000 points? Marty, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. In May, you'll be hosting the London Economic Confidence Model Seminar. Can you tell us about it, and where can people get tickets? Uh, well, they can get tickets on our site. Um, I'm not sure how many are still left, but because um, London tends to be a smaller venue than what we can do in, in like, Orlando, for example. But, uh, uh, yeah, basically, I mean, I used to live in London, so, you know, I thought we would do one in London for a change rather than, you know, Frankfurt or Berlin or something like that. Um <clears throat> But, you know, we have the economic confidence model turning May 7th, and this just looks to be an extremely important turning point. Uh, we're probably heading into a recession in, from finally after May going into maybe about 2028, and you got war cycles coming. It's just a real mess, really. And uh, so people sign up on your website. Can you? Uh, uh, yeah. You have a report out called the 2024 Outlook, the year from political hell. What the hell is that about? <laughs> and where can people get that report? Uh, well, they can you know go to our site for that. But, I mean, people don't realize. I mean, we, we focus on the elections here, um, like in, in 20, you know, this, at the end of the year for the U.S. But 60% of the world is going through elections. Um, I mean, the head of the EU is up for election. I mean, everywhere you go, it's, um, I mean, Russia just, you know, elected, uh, uh, Putin. I mean, everywhere you go, you, you had major election in, in Taiwan. Um, it's, it's, people are getting very frustrated pretty much everywhere. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's, the you know the economic conditions that have been so deplorable, uh, <clears throat> you know the uh, the COVID nonsense that they pulled off. I mean, so many companies are you know are just gone. Um, a lot of the, you know the vacancies in, in office buildings is still high. Uh, I mean, the whole objective for, was really uh, the climate change people. They wanted to end commuting. And so, you know, we have a lot of people now just working from home. Do you have any 2024 Outlook updates? Well, it um, it certainly appears what what's going on, I've been warning about uh, for a couple of years now, that they would be moving to try to create war before the election uh, here in the States, mainly because, um, you know, Biden is basically what I call their hand puppet. You know, he's not there 40% of the time. And and people have to understand how government really functions. Uh, you know, you have these cabinet meetings, and the president is supposed to be the referee. And so we have the State Department in the hands of the neocons. You have environmental in, in the hands of climate change people. And then you have the Treasury yelling at both of them, what are you doing? Um, and everybody's just doing their own thing. So there's nothing that's really coordinated. 
Um, I mean, an example, you got the neocons, you know, threatening China over Taiwan when China is the largest buyer of U.S. national debt and it started selling. And then, like, the Treasury, Yellen has to hop on a plane and go over there and say, please keep buying. What do you do? I mean, you, you can't threaten China and then at the same time say, please buy another, you know, a few billion dollars worth of our bonds so that we can buy some bullets to shoot you, you know? Uh, there's just no coordination. Nobody seems to be really in charge, and that's the real problem with Biden, that he's literally not there. He's in Delaware 40% of the time. Your economic confidence model turns down after May 7th to 8th, also known as 2024.35. Any thoughts on what this could be signaling? Um, it certainly appears that... Um, well, we're heading into an ec- an economic type decline, but inflation is going to continue upward because we're, this is part of the war cycle. So you really end up in a stagflation type thing like the late 1970s. Uh, and our computer on geopolitical uh, concerns, the two targets this year were uh, May, which is the strongest one, and then July, August. And... Um, so even this attack in Russia has got, you know, a lot of people now very, very concerned. The price of lithium looks like it might have put in a bottom. More and more gigafactories and even terafactories are being planned all over the world. Are you bullish on lithium and the battery metals for 2024? Um, look, they had a very strong rally for two years, but they fell back dramatically um, the sales of, of these EVs have declined. People really don't want them. Uh, and I know, you know, they keep pushing, oh, this is going to be fantastic, whatever, but it's just not. And um, <clears throat> even when we look at crude oil, uh, it, it, it still looks like it's going higher and you're not looking at a eventual peak until probably about 2029. Uh, you, You can't get, honestly, um, you can't get rid of of fossil fuels. Uh, I mean, this is, I mean, Germany's going, you know, it's it's economic decline has started because a lot of factories uh, can't get even uh, fuel anymore. Um, You can't switch everything to electric. And, you know, the wind and, and solar is very nice, but uh, it's not going to replace the entire power grid. It's just simply not. Well, I, I'm thinking of so many things that use uh, oil. For example, just paving a road, that's heavy oil. How is electricity yeah. going to replace that? It, it, you get these, honestly, for our... Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't even know where they, they come up with this stuff, but... In analysis, what the mis- giant mistake these climate people are doing is, oh, it went up a half a degree this year. Oh, it went up a, a quarter of a degree. La- okay, so let's extrapolate that. It's always going to go up now, and in, a, in 20 years, we're all going to be dead. It doesn't work that way. That's like saying, oh, well, the Dow went up, you know, 500 points last month, so it's going to do that forever. I mean... There are cycles in these things, okay? And But all of the analysis, I mean, you can go online and see they were calling for an ice age in the 70s. And when they got that wrong, they switched it to, to global warming. And, you know, we're all, we're all supposed to have, you know, honestly be dead by now. And um, I think it was even, they said Miami would be underwater by 2014. It's not. Um we didn't go into an ice age. They said the ice caps are all going to be gone by 2020. Uh, sorry, they're still there. You know, it's I, you know, you just can't do analysis in that fashion. Just because it goes up to three degrees three years in a row doesn't mean it, it just keeps going forever. Well, and someone said uh, one of the dangers with AI, if we can, for a second. You tell AI, okay, solve world hunger. How do we know the computers aren't going to decide that to solve world hunger, they should get rid of three or four billion of us? (laughs) Um, I mean, most of that is, I would say, Hollywood movie stuff. 
I mean, I've been, you know, one of the leaders in, in programming AI. Uh, we have our own AI system with a 40-year track record. It, it you, you can't possibly uh, create, I would say, a personality or something of that nature. This theory about AI, uh, it, it started with these people that, one, they don't believe in God or anything, and they think our brain is just a supercomputer, and consciousness is a mere factor that you throw all this data in, and it suddenly becomes alive. And so that's been the theories of uh, behind the Hollywood movies, etc. cetera. Um, great sells movies, but it's not practical. Um, I mean, like I say, I've been programming for a long time. I was even a keynote speaker at um, <clears throat> American Hackers <laughs> Convention. Uh, it, it's um, You can't do that, and it's not going to be able to make such a decision. And <clears throat> a lot of these people are calling AI, uh, you take this chat uh, program, it's a, it's a uh, it's a search program. You ask it, gee, what's, uh, you know, uh, somebody's dog's name? It, it has access to the Internet, goes back and says who it is. That's it. All right? It's not original thought. Uh, IBM created Big Blue and beat, a, you know, everybody on Jeopardy. And they said, this is going to cure cancer. Failed. It, it cannot come up with something. <clears throat> that it can't look up. So it's incapable of actual original thought. Um, our computer basically <clears throat> monitors the entire world. It does fantastic job in forecasting from a cyclical perspective. I taught how it, you know, how that would work. Um, you, it didn't just do this on its own. I mean, it, it, it's, and it's not going to tell you, uh, about anything other than what it has in its database. You know, it's not going to tell me, you know, what uh, Lady Gaga's dog's name is. It, it's just not, you know, it's not going to do that. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, AI, I wouldn't worry about it, you know, killing everybody or something like that. I would be more concerned about the climate change people who are in bed with the, the neocons, and they do want to reduce the world population by 50%. And that's why that you see all these leaders almost really cheering World War Three. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, all the time I grew up, you were working for a world peace. Nixon went to separate, you know, open China and divide them from, from Russia. And today we put them together. I mean, it, I, I really don't understand it, but it looks like they legitimately do want to create World War III so they can save the planet and reduce CO2. Doesn't all that radiation kind of ruin that if you go to World War Three? Actually, no. no. Uh, you can look at, you know, um, in Japan, those cities came back really good. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, it baffled everybody where Chernobyl went up, and everybody left, oh, you'll never be able to go there again. And these guys went there in in hazmat suits, and they saw mice running around all over the place. They said they should be dead. They took them, and they they it turned out to be, it's it's a refuge for wildlife. And the mice r reproduce very rapidly, and they're immune to radiation. Um, you can, you know, look at these studies. I mean, it's, it's very interesting what they thought would uh, destroy the world. It turns out it doesn't. The Dow is hovering around the 40,000-point mark. Does Socrates see a Dow hitting 50,000 points ahead and or a bull market into 2025? Yes, the Dow, I know, is, is up pretty high. I mean, this was our first target, and I put that out about probably about 10 years ago. Everybody thought it was nuts. Um, but uh, we're still going higher. By the, probably around 2032, you're looking at around 65,000. Um, and what you have to understand is that the, pay attention to the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. And you'll see that the Dow has led the way up. Why? Because that's where the big money goes, international money. And 
the more you start beating the war drums in Europe and Asia, major institutions, they start realizing, hey, you know, maybe we should diversify a little bit and been sending money to the, uh, the United States for the last, you know, three years aggressively. Uh, and major institutions, they they buy the big AAA stuff. I mean, they don't buy the NASDAQ startups things. I mean, if they lose money, the guy loses the job. So as long as he invests in all the, the you know, the big blue stuff, um, fine. If he lost money, everybody lost money, and he doesn't lose his job. But if he sticks his neck out and buys some company that um, everybody feels it is a big risk and he loses money, he, lo- he loses his job. So <clears throat> the Dow is moving up, and, and like I, I've said before, the U.S. was virtually bankrupt in 1896. That's when J.P. Morgan had to lend $100 million gold to bail it out and everything. Uh after World War One, New York became the financial capital, displaced London. After World War Two, U.S. had 76% of the world official gold reserves. And that's why the dollar became the reserve currency at Bretton Woods, etc. All right. That money came here because Europe was blowing itself apart. So if you start getting wars again over in Europe, as a lot of these European leaders seem to be beating the drums, that money's coming to North America. Um, you don't keep your money there in a bank when tanks are running down the street blowing things up. Does Socrates see the bond market signaling higher interest rates ahead? Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> it, keep in mind that there's a difference between long term and short term. The central bank can short, you know, can set the short term. They cannot do the long term. That is why they got involved in quantitative easing, which was buying in long-term debt. That's how they were trying to reduce the long-term interest rate, because that is set by the marketplace. All right. Now, as you enter war, all right, <clears throat> you got to be crazy to buy a 10-year bond. You know, why would you do that? Interest rates rise during wars. Plus, you don't know who's going to win. All right, you can go to eBay and buy plenty of bonds from different countries that are defaulted. All right, and then, you know, even Yellen had to jump on a plane and go off to China to try and convince them to keep buying. All right, it's a it's serious situation here. I mean, you can't have, um, like I said, you can't have these neocons trying to start war on absolutely every front and then interest rates going down. It's just not going to happen. Does Socrates see the April 8th eclipse coinciding with anything? Um, going into it, May, yes. I mean, it's uh, whether it's coincidence or not, it's hard to say. I mean, from ancient cultures, uh, solar eclipses were always seen as like a, an ap- apocalyptic type prophecy. Um, <clears throat> so... You know, it's it's interesting that it's showing up at the same time when we're looking at, you know, threats of war and things of this nature going on. Um, but as far as the ancients were concerned, it was usually meant a bad omen. Gold broke through $2,200 an ounce, but the gold stocks don't seem to care what's going on. Um You really have to understand that gold is neutral, all right? Um, And so a lot of these people are saying, oh, bricks, and they're going to go back. No, they're not. I mean, that's not the issue. Uh, A lot of central banks have been buying gold only because the neocons have turned the dollar into a weapon, when they went after you know Russia and took them out of SWIFT, that was a warning sign to everybody else. Hey, if you don't do what we tell you to do, we'll take you out of SWIFT. And so that's what the BRICS is really about. It's not um, the end of the dollar per se, as people or you know like to say, but <clears throat> because the U.S. is the biggest economy because it is a consumer-based economy. That means everybody needs to sell their stuff here, from the BMWs, the Toyotas, or the EVs coming in from China, 
um, it, it's, <clears throat> this is the consumer market. This is what China is now trying to move desperately to r- replicate on their side. And when they do that, you know, China will then displace the United States. But, um, you know, as opposed to Germany, uh, Germany never left the old mercantile um, model. Keep taxes very high, et cetera, so that um, they were more concerned about inflation. So, I mean, you can look at it, the average German has let, less net worth than an Italian. So their mercantile model is we don't sell to ourselves, we sell to everybody else. Um, so that that's the real problem why uh, Germany, you know, find it's the strongest economy in Europe because the rest of them are all, you know, really leftist uh, Marxist lovers. But... Um, it could never, uh, you know, compete with the United States, Japan, or China. How important is it to follow the commitment of traders' reports for gold? Um, maybe 50-50, because um, not everybody's really in there. Like I said, a lot of, you know, they've been, central banks have been buying gold mainly <clears throat> because the dollar has become political. And if the neocons are going to use it as a weapon, then basically they're trying to exit from that. Um, but they're also exiting from the EU and euros, etc. Uh, so it's more or less that you know the West is has become very aggressive uh, in its geopolitics, and when you do that, basically you don't buy the debt of your enemy. Is copper the commodity to watch? Um, yes, I mean in. In times of war, uh, copper basically goes up. Um, I mean, even in, if you look in uh, <clears throat> at World War II, in 1943, they replaced copper pennies with steel. Um, so copper <clears throat> looks like it's probably going up, and its major high is not going to be until around 2029, 20, 2030. Home sales are dropping, prices dropping, inventories going up. Are we likely getting close to the waterfall part of the real estate collapse? It depends where you're at. But um, uh, real estate on an average basis should be peaking here in 24 um, <clears throat> and moving back down. But you, you also have a lot of migration So a lot of people, like in the States, they're leaving the blue states and going to Florida. Um, I mean, I can tell you that traffic is absolutely at least doubled since I moved here. Uh, It's it's horrible. Even what used to take me 15 minutes can take 45 minutes to get there now. Um, It's just that every, I mean, I was even in Texas, and a lot of our clients, you know, went to dinner with in, um, in Austin, and they all wanted to move to, to Florida. And I asked them why. And they said people are getting stabbed from in malls and stuff. The migrants are all over the place. And he said, which is, which is true, he says, Florida, they got to at least swim to get to you. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it's more and more people just keep moving to Florida. And it, it's, it's incredible. Canada saw its biggest population increase last year since 1957 up 2.3 something like a million more people is that contributing to the housing crisis because here we didn't have enough houses before these people got here uh yes i mean uh i want to you know i point out one thing i mean back in 1998 uh hong kong knew i knew the australian government and they asked me if I would negotiate with them to buy an island so they could move rather than, you know, handing it back to China, et cetera. And I met with the Prime Minister, Paul Keating. And um, everything I said at the time, and I think he was treasurer at that time, uh, then he became Prime Minister. And I said, look, you know, I got a blank check here. I can pay off your national debt. And everything I asked for it was no, no, no. And I finally, you know, I it just made no sense. And I said to him, I said, is this racist? You don't like Chinese or something? <clears throat> and he said, no. He said, they're fleeing uh, communism. 
he was a labor government. He said if we let them in, they would vote conservative and change the politics of the country. That's what this migration is all about. Uh, the 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 left knows it's losing, and they are they want as many of these people to come in as possible. And they're doing the same thing in Europe because they think they can shore up their political power. And um, so they're basically destroying our cultures. Our you know, they're I mean everything just is all, and this is all being done for politics. Could wiping out the real estate market fit with the Agenda 2030 plan where, quote, you will own nothing and be happy, unquote? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I know <clears throat> Klaus Schwab. I mean, he's just a – he literally has a, a, a bust of Lenin on his bookshelf. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Klaus has always been that way. He's a leftist. He's an academic. Just about everybody in, in academia – are, are always leftists, and um, his ideas do not work. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I he had I had even gone to China, uh, was invited to China, and and helping them be you know becoming more capitalistic, and I saw why it failed. I mean, there were two hundred forty nine varieties of tea, and they were tracking everything, but they were not interfering. And the questions I got was, well, why is this tea selling for a dollar here but five dollars over there? I said, well, where is it manufactured at first? Said, well, here. I said, well, first you have commu- you know, transportation costs. It was like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, in communism, if it was a dollar here, it had to be a dollar there, even if it cost you ten dollars to get it there. Um, so that's why communism, it does not work. Um, it's not practical. Uh, you'll own nothing, and you will not be happy. Uh, and neither will society. Society does not advance without somebody actually creating things. And if you're not allowed to think, you know, individually or create something, um, you're not going to move. I mean, that's the famous kitchen debate with Richard Nixon and Khrushchev, was showing the the kitchen and what Americans had versus. Uh, in Russia, and he says, this is all private sector created it, not government. We'll have more with Martin Armstrong right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. You're listening to GoldRadio.fm. Available online at HowStreet.com, TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Martin Armstrong. Could cryptocurrencies have been created to be placeholders for CBDC, central bank digital currencies? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> look, it is, it, it take Bitcoin. If this was really created individually by people that, oh, we are afraid of central banks and all the rest of the nonsense that they put out, then why would you make it so that uh, the blockchain <clears throat> and it can be traced? So if I give you a $100 bill, they don't know where I came from. But if I give you 100 in Bitcoin, they know where I got it from. They can trace it all the way back. That is not freedom. Uh, that is not um what you would expect from the private sector who's anti-government. Uh, it's just, I honestly think the government created it. Um, and I mean, nobody knows who did this real blockchain stuff. And, but, um, now you have these CBDCs and they're all going to be traceable. Uh, this is the future. Uh, I can tell you, I've been in meetings and why they're doing it is because they are so convinced that we, the public, are a bunch of scumbags, and we don't pay the taxes that we really should. They think in Europe, Canada, U.S., the consensus is if they eliminate cash, you know, they will collect 35% more in taxes. They just feel that everybody just doesn't really pay what they're supposed to, and, 
And he said, before, if you hire that 16-year-old girl next door to watch the kids while you and your wife go out to dinner, and he gave her $50, hours, oh, my God, does she even pay any taxes? <laughs> you know, this is, I mean, these people don't sleep at nights over this. You had Janet Yellen, uh, I mean, <clears throat> saying, oh, well, we're, going to, you know, lower the threshold for, for audits down to $600 to get the rich. You know, their definition of rich is anybody with a job anymore. I mean, I don't think Elon Musk is selling a, a, a used bike on, on eBay for $600. The Baltimore Bridge accident or black swan terror attack? Probably a questionable accident. All right. And why I say that is that the same ship happened to be in uh, an incident in, um, in Belgium, in Antwerp also. Um but what is strange is usually there would be tugboats there, um, taking it out, etc. Nothing was there. Uh, they claimed they had a power failure, um, so they couldn't, you know, <clears throat> blast the bridge or anything like that. Uh, it's you, they have no backup. Uh, it's either <clears throat> really a ship that is so, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, not kept up to speed, not, you know, the systems. I mean, uh, why would you take a ship like that and and, and lose its power? <laughs> um, I don't know. It just does not seem uh, – it, it's. I don't think it was a, a, ter- a terrorist attack, um, but it's certainly, you know, incompetence on, on a major level. Poor maintenance and a company that doesn't care. Probably. Uh, you got all these companies just trying to cut corners, etc. at this stage in the game. But there should have been tugboats taking this down the river. What, where were they? It, well, of course, it's 1 o'clock in the, in the morning. I mean, it's, um, you know, it, there's a lot of things that are very strange about it. That That's for sure. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it was a terrorist attack. Um, I mean, it's it, maybe it was loaded with cargo. Is diversity, equity, and inclusion the path to Marxism? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're all equal in rights, but not in talent. Um, you know, do you pay me the same price that you would pay uh, a quarterback if I can't throw the ball like he can? I mean, you know, come on. I mean, we all we're everybody has different things. I mean, some people can be a brain surgeon, and other people can be a mechanic, uh, and. <clears throat> The fair value for the labor is based upon the quantity. If they're, you know, you had everybody and his brother wanted to be a brain surgeon, then the price is going to come down. Um, but you know, we're equal in rights, not in talent, and and that's the whole problem with you know the whole Marxist agenda. Uh, and you know, Marx was just. Oh, well, they made a profit off your labor, and they wouldn't make that profit without your labor. But the labor wouldn't have a job unless somebody created a company to hire them. You know, it, uh, and Marx never <clears throat> attributed anything to ingenuity or, or invention. You know, he just hated somebody like, uh, you know, Henry Ford, who happened to create the assembly line, and if he didn't, Cars would have never came down for the average person. Um, so, I mean, we're equal in rights. We're not equal in talent. Is it true during uh, communist Russia that the little private gardens farmers were allowed to hold, produce more food than the giant collective farms? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there's a movie on this, actually, Mr. Jones, I think it's called. Um, and because what happened was in communism, uh, like Marx, oh, you own nothing and be happy. <laughs> they seized all the, all the big farms. And then it's like putting somebody in charge that runs, you know, uh, at DMV office in charge of farming. They had no idea when to plant or anything. There was a massive food shortage. And then they stole the food from Ukraine to pretend that communism was working. So seven million Ukrainians died. Um, and the New York Times is saying, oh, Stalinism is working, it's working. It was not. It was all fraud. But, um, you know, the, the small garden at home 
the guy knew what he was doing. <clears throat> Rather than a bureaucrat that has no concept of, of anything to do with, with farming, making the decisions, what to plant, when. He, he got everything wrong, and, and Russia would have completely starved, and there would have been a major revolution if they did not steal the food from Ukraine. All over mainstream media, ISIS is taking responsibility for the terror attack in Russia. Who do you think is really responsible for the terror attack? Uh, Ukraine in the West. Um, look, anybody can pick up a phone and say, oh, we take responsibility. Look at the everybody that I know that, that has anything to do with geopolitics does not believe that story. Uh, Russia came out, actually, um, and just said that they believe Ukraine, uh, Britain, and U.S. were involved. And they're correct. I mean, if this was a terrorist attack, uh, they die in the attack because that's how they go to heaven. All right? It's a holy war. You don't, you know, kill a whole bunch of people and then try to escape to Ukraine. Secondly, Putin <clears throat> is supporting Iran. All right? So why would these types of terrorists that are anti, you know, Israel, et cetera, then suddenly attack Russia? It makes no sense. And they never did before. So, I mean, um, this is part of the agenda that is, and I've warned that going into May, they're desperate to try and create a, some sort of a false flag. And because they want Russia to attack a NATO entity um, and so they can claim that Russia is the aggressor. Uh, but this terrorist attack was carried out by Ukrainians. Um, uh, the same thing with Buka. I mean, even the, you know, the, the government had to come out and said there's no evidence that Russia did anything there either. It was all fiction and made up. Um, I mean, I've seen videos where you see bodies laying on the road and then, you know, they start to get up when the van passes on. Uh, it, you know, Ukrainians are, are masters at, at propaganda. Um, that's what they're really known for. And this is, Ukraine is on the verge of collapsing. Um, even Zelensky came out, I think it was like a couple weeks ago, denying reports and says, no, 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 we can decide if we want peace itself. And that's nonsense. They had a peace deal worked out, Boris Johnson from Britain hopped on a plane, went over there and killed it and says, you're not allowed to, to seek peace with Russia. And, you know, that made the press in, U in Ukraine. I mean, I've, you know, I can tell you there are a lot of people, Ukrainians, that want to have Zelensky killed. They would love to see him assassinated. They feel that he's a, um, he has basically been a traitor to their own country. Uh, when he was elected, he ran for peace, and he's done everything opposite. Um, I mean, even in these stupid laws that uh, he puts in art to create war, he outlawed Russian language. He's now even gone as far as to outlaw the the uh, Orthodox Christian language or, or religion, and they have to celebrate Christmas on December 25th, not January. Um I mean, just look at it this way. If, if Canada stood up and said, okay, fine, we're going to outlaw French, I think you're going to go into a civil war as well. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't do these kinds of things. I mean, you know, what kind of a government does that? Would the United States say we're going to outlaw Spanish? Um, you know, these things are deliberately made to create, you know, discord. And, um, but the neocons have been wanting to do this. The, the, 2014 revolution, I mean, just, you know, do a little bit of your own research and you'll see that what mainstream media keeps putting out is nothing but Western propaganda. Um, and the 2014 revolution there in Ukraine, who was there? Victoria Newland, uh, and there was a leak that, uh, uh, you know, uh, of a phone call that she was making. It said, F, you know, the EU, we're putting in our people. And they put in an interim government. They immediately told the inter interim government to attack the Donbass. Okay. This was all unelected. And after you ended up with uh, the election, <clears throat> you know, and like I said, you can also Google it. Um, 
Zelensky was running on peace. Vote for me and I'll end this thing with Russia and seek peace. And that's what everybody voted for. Um, we had two Ukrainian um, employees, one in the Kiev and one in Donetsk, one on each side. They're both in Berlin right now. Over 8 million people have fled the country. And over half a million people have died on the battlefields since Boris Johnson killed the the, um, the peace deal. I mean, Zelensky is not well received. That's why he's also suspended and said, oh, martial law, and there'll be no elections, because he's a dictator. That's not democracy. Um, we didn't suspend our elections during World War II. You know, it's, but he knows that he would be, he would lose in the polls. Uh, if there was ever any kind of election, the people would vote him out. Uh, they wanted peace. What, where does this benefit Ukraine at all? Um, it, it just simply does not. They've been used, you know, and abused, and a lot of people, in Ukraine are you know, waking up to this. They realize this has got nothing to do with their country or anything else. This is the West using them as cannon fodder. As simple as that. So they were virtually on the on very close to to collapse. That's why Macron came out and said, "Well, you know, we should be sending in NATO troops to Ukraine." Poland came out and said the same thing. They wouldn't be saying this if they had the troops. They don't, okay? And this desperate attack on Moscow is them, it's a, you know, what they call a Hail Mary, basically, praying, please, Russia, attack something over here so we can bring in all the West. That's what they want. They want World War Three. It's election season. What do you think the powers that be will try to do to the people this time to instill fear in order to rig the election? Uh, well, the two main things is one is that they're, you know, all the migrants, they, um, you even have Mississippi already trying to pass a law that they're allowed to vote. Um, and, you know, the, you got many of the Democrats saying that they can vote. You know, well, if you don't have to be a citizen to vote, please, everybody from Canada also vote. You know, Europe should be voting. Why not? Um I mean, this is, you know, just gets to be absurd. I, I can't go to Canada and vote in your elections. <laughs> but um, the other thing is that, that they're desperately afraid of Donald Trump and that if he wins, he would then fire all the neocons like he did before. Trump's against war. Um, I went to Mar-a-Lago for dinner back in March of 20 when he was president, and I was actually impressed. It was the first time I ever heard any head of state, and what he said then was that he wanted to pull the troops out of Afghanistan, but the reason was, he said, he was sick and tired of writing letters to their families that their son died, uh, you know, for what, he said. They've been fighting over borders for a thousand years. What difference are we going to make? That's why he wanted to get out. All right. And, you know, I've been, I've known many heads of state who was personal friends with Maggie Thatcher. Or she had the Falklands War. I never heard any head of state ever once speak of any remorse for the people that actually die on the battlefield. So they are scared to death. Uh, he fired John Bolton. Um, I mean, he would invade Canada to get one Russian. Uh, it, Victoria Newland. I mean, all these these people, they're just consumed with hatred. And they know if Trump gets in, he's cleaning house. Uh, so basically, what I am concerned about is that they are desperate to create um, World War III before the election, uh, because this theory is no president has ever lost uh, during times of war. So, you know, pay attention uh, to May. Uh, I would be very concerned about there. I hope Putin does not uh, respond um, in kind, or if he does in kind, it would be a terrorist type attack that he can say no to as well. But, um, but if he actually takes any sort of a direct um, attack, um, then they're going to say, see, he's the aggressor and everybody's in. What are C-40 cities, and can they be stopped? Uh, again, it, it's part of this whole nonsense that, uh, um, you know, the whole 
15 minute city stuff that you don't need cars. Uh, you know, all I can say is these people are, are quite deranged and, and it's, it's, they don't understand analysis or even how to conduct it. And, um, <clears throat> the world does not function in a linear fashion. And like I said, you know, they just take the same thing, uh, all the time. And that's what they do. Um, they assume that, you know, whatever trend in motion will always stay in motion and will never change. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I, I just am very skeptical about, you know, this whole thing. Um, but, you know, the C40 is a global network of mayors of the world, you know, leading cities that are united in action to confront climate crisis. Uh, it's, um, there is no climate crisis. You know, we've got a political crisis is what we got. We've heard the U.N. is actually running Canada. Could this be true? Yes, that's what all this, um, you know, Klaus Schwab has been with his young leaders infiltrating. He's very aggressive, all right? And the U.N., you have to understand, they want power. They're not trying to take over the world like Napoleon with the, with troops coming in. They're trying to do it covertly <clears throat> with the pen. And um, this whole climate change, the reason it is being pushed is because no single country, like these 40 cities, no single country can possibly defend against climate change. It's going to take us all, and therefore there has to be a central authority and guess what? That's the United Nations. Um, at their climate, you know, agenda, you know, big conference a few years ago, I can tell you, because I know people that were there, absolutely nobody that disagreed was ever allowed to even speak. That's not freedom of speech. That's not science. Um, and because this has got a political agenda to it, and the U.N. is trying to basically run everything. The same thing with who is coming out with all this stuff. We will determine when a pandemic is, and you will shut down when we tell you to. Now, who are these people? They're completely unelected. There, there is no democracy. Forget that. A lot of people have taken a number of experimental medical procedures over the past three years. Are these people changing mentally for the worse? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's. Um, I don't get into the medical thing so much, but I, honestly... Um, before COVID, I would get you know the you know the flu shot or whatever. After COVID, forget it. I will not. Um, I decline at this stage because it's just um, when they get absolute immunity for everything, then why would you even trust them for anything? Uh, with COVID, I mean, I go get my hair cut, and both of the the elderly women lost their son in laws in their twenties uh, within weeks of being vaccinated. Both of them died. The, the girl right next door to me that lives, she was 27 years old, got it. She had COVID, but had to get a COVID shot to go on a family cruise. The next day they took her out of here in an ambulance. She almost died uh, from the heart uh, problems. I mean, it seems as though the younger people were hit with the heart issues. Um, my <clears throat> attorney from up in Philadelphia got the, the vaccine so he could travel, and now he gets blood clots, and so he won't fly anymore. Uh, you, you know, look, I mean, there's something seriously wrong here. They just bribed all these politicians to get away with this stuff. And, I mean, can you imagine if uh, General Motors put out a car and one in a thousand blows up when you just put the key in it? Oh, but they're immune, so you can't sue them, so why would they fix it? You, you don't do that. It's They should not be immune um, and they know that everybody that gets a vaccine, that some people are going to die. They know that. Uh, I have one guy that, that works for me. His whole family came and get a flu shot. They get seriously sick. We're all not the same. Some people no problem. Other people, they, they do. You can't mandate that everybody has to have something. And what's going on in, in Chicago right now? <clears throat> These migrants are in there, they're refusing to get vaccinated, and the government says, oh, that's okay, you don't have to be. They can be. We lose our jobs if we're not. Something is seriously wrong here. 
We've heard of squatters legally taking over people's homes in New York as well as Spain. Is this the latest nightmare being unleashed upon the world by the powers that be? Yeah, look, I mean, there's there's TikTok videos out there. You know, any house that's not occupied, we can take it. Telling all these migrants just to go in and just, you know, squat, that's it. Authoritarian, authoritarian governments have entrenched themselves around the world. Election fraud could keep them in place. How does society get rid of authoritarian governments? Well, you know, it's, it's what they say about communism. You can vote your way in, but you got to shoot your way out. Uh, unfortunately, um, <clears throat> that's history. I mean, that's what, you know, even Thomas Jefferson said, you know, revolution is inevitable. Um, you can't have a government that just ignores everybody. We got the power and you're going to do as I tell you. And eventually that leads to revolution. Um, and I think that's what our computer is projecting. We're seeing um, this 2024 election. I don't care who wins. The computer is showing a sharp rise in civil unrest afterwards. Neither side's going to believe whoever won. It's the country's become so polarized um, because of all this propaganda back and forth in the press. And um, then we got international war. I don't see this surviving. Our form of governments, republics, um, are coming to an end the same way monarchy did. Uh, hopefully, after 2032, we go to a real direct democracy. Um, but we... They claim we live in a democracy when we do not. We don't get asked, shall we go to war with Russia, yes or no? Nobody asks us that question. They just make the decisions themselves. Um, and, you know, COVID shots. Everybody will do this. You know, it, it's this is not government. Civilization exists when it's beneficial to everybody. When one side starts to become the oppressor of the other side, it fails. All right. His history is the witness to that. Eventually, it leads to revolution. Where can people buy your report, the 2024 Outlook, the year from political hell? Um, on our website at uh, armstrongeconomics.com. Um, the, the books are available on uh, Amazon. You can go on Amazon for the books um, the, that I've done, uh, manipulating the world economy, the you know, plot to seize Russia, the civil you know, the cycles of war, etc. All that is is on um, is on Amazon. Marty, thank you so much for being on this week in money. Well, thank you for inviting me, Jim, and take care up there. My guest has been Martin Armstrong, founder of Armstrong Economics, available online at armstrongeconomics.com. He was speaking to us from Florida. Comments made on goldradio.fm are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at howstreet.com, talkdigitalnetwork.com. GoldRadio.fm is a production of How Street Media Incorporated. Executive producer is Tom Allen.